Okay, this um, mini series is around appropriate targeting, focus targeting, dynamic targeting, whichever way you want to look at it. So, in my own head, um, I view targeting as um, it's like a a goal that you're wanting to achieve. So you can set your target, and then from there you have to find out whether it's realistic or not that you're going to be able to achieve that target it's pretty usual in any business sense or um school work or anything like that where you've got a goal you want to achieve something um, ordinarily you've set some type of target whether it's an official target it's just a goal of yours that's a target so everyone does it it's nothing special same with chess if you're wanting to mobilize on the board you have to first visualize in your own head what is it that you actually want to do what is your target um, then you can focus on that target then underneath that target are calculations is it an appropriate target is it achievable does it have to be done in bite-sized chunks you know um, do you have to say like if you're wanting to ride a bike to um, to London from Manchester whatever you know you, you want to do something extreme or you just want to do something simple or like um, ride a bike to a destination firstly can you ride a bike if you can't ride a bike then you learn how to ride a bike bite-sized chunks if you can ride a bike you have to look at the rea realistic nature of the distance that you're willing to travel have you traveled that distance before are you going to have to do it in bite-sized chunks small distances at a time training towards it or is it one of those types of um, journeys where you have to take incremental steps towards achieving the goal no matter how fit you are no matter how good you can ride the bike you still have to do it in small little chunks a mile at a time two miles at a time that type of thing you know what i mean so that's the same thing that occurs with chess there's nothing different with that so we're going to go through this game here, uh, well, go through a game or a set of games just to work through our targeting process and then looking at the reality of that target. Is it achievable? Is it a long-term target that we can sit back and sort of slowly develop on? Or is it an immediate target that is then going to lead on to the next goal, the next target? Okay. So from here at this moment in time, the target point is basically trying to manage this particular square here. Just based on my own experience, I'm going to bring this through here. It's a three minute game, so we have to move fairly swiftly. Um, so as we said, we really want to clear this up. So let's go here. I'm going to take the pawn here. So our initial target has been achieved. So now we want to develop a further target, which is getting our king safe. So the Castling aspect is the key thing for us. So we've achieved the next target point. So what's the next target point? Looking to disturb this bishop. So that's my next target based on my own calculations and experience. So that this is new. It's coming through with the queen. So our next target is obviously if we are available, which is the queen, is a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. So the rook can attack the queen. So that's an immediate target. So now it's challenging this pawn, which was always going to be happening. So we can bring our queen here to support the pawn at this moment in time. The queen is kind of by itself, but we don't really have anything that can challenge it at the moment. So there's one or two things that can happen. We could push through with the pawn here, trying to release the tension from this pawn. But he may just bring his rook to the side. So I'm actually going to attack anyway. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece, reason being time's running down. And we have one piece there, one piece here, and the queen here. So we've got three pieces, he's only got two. So we're going to attack the queen. We're going to have to move really quick. We're going to have to attack the queen with the, the smaller piece. This diagonal dark squares is looking fairly free for us to touch on the king, but you know, it's a momentary disturbance, it's nothing major. So the other option is that he brings this rook, like we mentioned before, to attack, you know, to defend the area. So then he's got three pieces, M1, 2 and 3. But it looks like the opponent may have left the game. 
based on what's showing on the screen at the minute. So we've got eight seconds, seven seconds. So it might have been too much for them. Bit of pressure towards the center. But hopefully that highlights what we were attempting to do in terms of setting targets. A bit of a quick game that we will do a longer game now just to go through um, slowly the targeting process. You may have already seen the previous videos that we've just recently um, posted about focus targeting and that's off the back of that that we're then extending out these sessions to really break down the choices of targets. Okay, so we're going to go through a 30 minute 10 second game um, looking at the focus targeting. Um, hopefully willing that the opponent stays on. So we're going to grab this pawn because that's pretty simple, straightforward. It's a capturing of a piece. And again, this is pretty simple and straightforward. We're actually attacking the queen. So that's an appropriate target. And this is all simplified really because we could bring the bishop out to defend, but obviously that's slowing the process down. So ordinarily just attack the queen. It's a simple target. And developing the bishop out is probably better than blocking the bishop in with the knight. So that's why we've gone with the bishop. So appropriate targeting, the targets were given to us at that point. So we didn't have to do much calculation in terms of delivering that. This is a bit of an innocuous position for their bishop, but it is at least developing their piece. So I'm not going to get too twisted that he's blocked this pawn for now. Um, I am thinking in the back of my head he's lost tempo, but... We're going to develop our knight, looking to basically target around this region here, especially focusing towards the bishop. So this is probably a key one. But first of all, we're going to castle, because obviously that's an important goal for us to be achieving. Don't want to block our own dark square bishop in, so we may just hang fire on the bishop attack. We could push through, but then the knight is actually going here anyway. So let's go for an appropriate target. It is a bit bad in a sense. Maybe we need to be opening our dark square bishop first. But the bishop is protecting this pawn. Let's attack the bishop because it's there. I'm chomping at the bit to attack the bishop. Knights hunt the bishops in our mantras most of the time. All depends on the position. So he's keeping his bishop there, all right? So we can just simply take the bishop off the board. It doubles their pawns in the center. Not that that's a bad thing, but you know, um, let's go with that. Keep it as simple as possible. We want to keep it as simple as possible, even in the advanced section, intermediate section, in the beginner section. We want to keep things as simple as possible. So now we've got double pawns here, so is there something we could target? We could target this pawn, but the bishop can't get there because of this knight. It could come this way and attack the pawn this way. So we're going to bring our bishop to target this pawn, which has got no protection on. I suppose APs could protect, maybe the knight comes here to protect, which would make sense. And then our small, oh, well, they can move it. So we can x-ray through now. Knee-jerk reaction. We can x-ray through now onto their king. Is there anything better? Can't attack the pawn because we don't have, have anything underneath. But if we x-ray, before I do it, if we x-ray through, then we bring the rook here, then we can take this pawn because the knight can't take. So it's probably going to have to bring something else to defend it. Maybe the knight coming here. So I think that looks like a plan. It's a one-two type of calculation that's in reinforcing the initial target point. So when you're setting your goals, you set your targets, yeah, that looks good, but then do the calculations to see whether or not it's a viable goal and, and if it's got real meat on the bones. If the goal is that, oh yes, it... Oh, it's moved it, so we're not going to get the we're not going to get the pawn now because he's going to be able to defend it. And even if we did take, he'd just take back with his overnight, and he'd still be able to defend it. 
So let's keep the bishop here for now. And let's maybe look at trying to open up this pawn. So we could then attack their knight. Because it can sit on this pawn here. Then the pawn can take... I think that's something to work with. So let's just gently open this pawn. His bishop's stuck on the back at the minute. And there's no activity. But I'm believing his knight's going to be attacking our bishop. Giving us something to think about. In the meantime, we are planning to attempt to attack there. Yeah, so he's come to the place that we said. So he's giving us things to think about. So what's the next space or piece that we can attack? Obviously, the rook may come down here, but we need to just move the bishop, maybe. I think moving the bishop here is going to be okay. He's going to push his pawn down. Uh, maybe we just move the bishop all the way back. Seems to be some activity going to be kicking off around here, especially with his own. Would be nice to have the bishop here. If he brought it here, then his knight takes, knight takes, and the pawn gets put in the middle. Mm, 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 mm. I can always come down this side as well, don't forget. But keeping my king company, I think, is one of the key things for us. So let's keep the king company and bring the bishop back. So they'll be trying their hardest to try and get protection for this pawn, which probably would be this pawn here, and then maybe getting the bishop out protecting the pawn. We do still have the rook being able to attack here, but again, they're probably going to give us something to think about. So we've got to constantly be thinking, well, what are they trying to do? So, yes, he knows there's pressure going to be on this. So he's actually giving it up, but not giving it up. Because if we take, he's got two pieces on there. He's got two knights. So we could just take with the pawn and then be just reassured that, well, that's a simple sort of targeting. Because at the end of the day, if we didn't take it, it's going to probably cause us more trouble. In the long run he's got too many pieces attacking the square so now though now they're covering this space they don't need to cover this space anymore obviously one of them is going to take the pawn because they want to equalize then we can take the knight we could but we don't have to like we've mentioned before you, just because you can doesn't mean that you have to you're not forced to if there's something better if i don't then he doubles our pawns but I can move. Is there anything viable? I mean, this bishop's got a nice diagonal, but I've not got any support. Uh, if we take, his knight takes, and his knight is in the center. I think simply just capturing is not going to hurt, hurt us. As far as I can see. So if we get our dark square bishop out, in fact, potentially could have gone there. But let's go here with the dark square Bishop, looking to go simply targeting their rook. The bishop probably needs to look at getting out of there because he needs to link his rooks up to support, as far as I can see. So that's the, see the limit to where, which we did our, yes, yeah, so he's making space for his um, bishop to actually come out. It's going to target our pawn, so are we able to support that? Yes, just a little touch here. And yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, so it's only like one step, two step type calculations that are then enfor reinforcing the targeting. So it does capture. Okay, so do we lose out? Is he still coming with the bishop? Still coming with the bishop, yet. Yeah. okay. So that's nice and steady. We're blocking off their targeting in that sense. We do have a little touch here, looking to put pressure on. I think they will probably... He'll have to move the rook, I think. If he's not, he's not going for an exchange, because he'd have to move his king. So he has to move his rook off of the line. If he doesn't want to exchange his bishop. Or maybe he's just looking to accept the fact that we're going to go here and then he's just going to move his rook to this square. 
support him so then when we take his rook comes off the line then we get a back rank checkmate that would be interesting so they've gone into a deep think now so it looks like we're going to be in a bit of trouble the, this is where the magic comes out but hopefully you've seen the targeting that we've been doing uh, we've narrated it all the way through and yes we chose the target then we did a bit of calculation um, to reinforce whether it was a good move or not so that's what's the that's the difference between focus targeting and just simply targeting oh interesting so um, I'm going to continue with this because if they do take then we're on his knight as well okay so is there a fork just before we jump in yeah because we can take with the pawn if the rook comes here is there a magical fork on our king there is no fork from his knight so his knight's gonna have to just move let's go here so it's even stevens in terms of pawns material etc um, I'm hoping to try and get the advantage positionally. So where's the knight go? It's going to go back here. Sit. No, in fact, he'll go here attacking the bishop. What am I talking about? So he'll attack the bishop. We've got a white square. White square there. So we're really kind of looking to potentially do something like this, but I don't think we'll get that off. But the attempt is there. Is there anything better before I just do that knee-jerk reaction? Da -da 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 -da. Could come here. No, we couldn't because the knight would just take. So I think, yeah, that's a nice, simple operation. So obviously we can't drop there straight away because the knight's there, but we can push the pawn onto the knight to shoo it away. we will probably then attack the rook. And then we can get here, attacking the pawn, or maybe we focus on attacking the pawn first. So they've gone into a deep think. I'm not going to over overdose my brain now, but this is the move that they'll make next. Well, they made the move, and that's not the move that they made next. <laughs> they, they went here with the knight. Okay, so that's a horse of a different colour because it's not attacked anything, but at the same token, I can't really get here to attack this pawn. Um, I can push up, but that's no good to me. So I think the white square bishop now needs to get into its own. Yeah, instead of just sitting there, I think we need to get into our own. Then the knight has got attacking the rook then we do have going up to here <clears throat> but I suppose he's going to get his rook into the game so I'm actually just going to activate the bishop managing these squares here managing these squares these here obviously my goal is to try and manage this diagonal I don't know if I'm going to get that off or not so that is my big target, as we mentioned earlier. So it's nice to have something to work towards. What's the benefits? The benefits are that, you know, it jams this in here and if my rook gets on the back somehow, some strange way, uh, we could take and then he's got the, you know, the pawns here. Is there anything else? So we can take, they're giving us the pieces again to actually target. Sometimes you have to think, well, why are they giving me up these things for free? Is this better for us? We're equal on pawns, but this pawn is kind of isolated, it's split. If we take, then we're bringing his pawn into line. So that's the downside to that. So I think maybe if we go here and attack the pawn. And his rook comes to defend. His rook doesn't have to come and defend though because the knight's there defending it. So he doesn't really have to do that. 
So maybe the, if the king comes across then we've got like a take anything off the board thing because we can take here because we've got a check on the a discover check with the bishop on the king. Um, I believe I don't really like attacking something that's got a defender on it. But if we go there and then they say they do the rook move or whatever yeah if we take he's still going to be defending it yeah that's the shame thing about it mm, let me think let me think come on focus targeting don't see anything wrong with it it gives them something to think about yep so it gives them something to think about because if they don't bring their rook here, then we can take this pawn, this knight. If they take back, then we can take this pawn here. So we're giving them something to think about. That's the rationale for that targeting. It makes sense to me. I've checked that. Yes, it can come here, but there's no immediate kind of, you know, funky forks on both pieces. You've got to watch these knights. So this is targeting. This is focus targeting. Calculate. Have a goal. Yeah. Look at the goal first. Say to yourself, okay, well, what is available to me on, on here? Yes, there's a pawn. Yep. Yes, there's a nice space here in front of the king. Um, so in essence, we could try it. I think we might get away with it, you know. Capture. He captures. Rook captures, then his rook comes here looking for the back rank checkmate. Oh, and then he's got these pawns here on the back. Ah, I hate them positions. Hate them positions. Ah, oh, there, there, there he comes there. We push up. This is why I hate these positions. I'm going to run through it now. Yep. Then he comes down with a check on our king. Then we go up. Then he comes back up, attacking both these pawns. Yeah, and I've got nothing to defend them because my rook is up here. Yes, I can take this pawn off here. He takes that pawn. Then we start shooting up one. He's already got elevated pawns, but these pawns are blocking, so he'd have to take this one. Then we can go up again. So then he's going to be rushing to get these pawns down. So this one's elevated, the same as mine. So I'll push, push. His rook's in the way, so he's going to have to move his rook. So tempo wise, oh, my, my rook's in the way as well. So he's going to have to move his rook. I'm gonna have to move my rook with a check maybe. Get a check, win a tempo, king moves down. Push. Do you know, we might win that. <laughs> we might win that. That's a lot of calculation, that's more than four moves ahead, but I'm just thinking, I don't like those types of positions. Okay, let's take. So I don't think there's any further thing I need to do now. It's just a matter of just going through the motions and seeing if the calculation works out. In fact, maybe I could push this earlier. Oh no, because he's got the pawn blocking. And he's not done that anyway. Ah, oh, thank you. Right. But he's probably still going to be allowed to because I'm chomping at the bit to come for this pawn. Nothing can defend this pawn. Let's go for this pawn. So yet again, he can still go there. Yeah, that's fine. So we're back into that situation again. So let's go. Up. So we've got the... So he's basically coming down, looking to get these pawns here. Um, we're hoping, fingers crossed, that tempo-wise, I think now that we've pushed this pawn, it might have made it even quicker for us, because before we pushed this centre pawn to give the king a flight square. 
So then he comes up to attack these pawns. We take this here. And then he takes the other ones. Then we start pushing. Yeah, we should be okay. Well, he's not even doing that. All right, Sam. So let's go here. It's totally different. This is not what we calculated. Push. If he pushes this king, I'm going to have to. I should have done that before. I should have moved the king first. Because when he pushes there, then I can't take. If I bring my rook here. We'll bring the rook here. Give space and then I can push, push, push. Only issue is though, if you think about it, if he pushes there, then I take his pawn. Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, I can take there. That's fine. Yep. So is he losing tempo? Is he going to bring his rook back again to come back here and defend? So it's the, these sort of end game type things you think, oh well, it, to get the perfect move you have to be, you have to be a computer, you know, because it's one square that makes all the difference. I might have moved it to the right area, but the one square might have been the the winning thing so he's moved his king so he doesn't want my rook getting any tempos but hopefully we're going to whiz up hope i've not messed this up no i can just take okay so he is going whizzing up he's going whizzing up so we could take And then go behind the pawn, but it's just going to block it, isn't it? It's just taking forever. We do have this pawn here. Um, what do we do? Uh, you know, I'm going to push just to give them something to think about. Because the tempo will work, won't it? So if he's then deciding to go up and block, we can still take. And then he comes across to block, and then we can go behind the pawn with our rook. Yep, seems like a plan. So I'm going to take. No, I'm not going to take. I'm going to push, aren't I? Is there something happening here? Wait a minute, right? So if I do push and then he pushes down, my rook can still take the pawn. That's right. Yeah, there's no issues there. I keep thinking that I can't take, you know, I can't take, but I'm going to take with the. Let's push. It's very bad when you get to the end game type thing. My brain definitely goes fuzzy because the amount of times where you feel, yes, okay, so he's gone for that. So we can go behind, grab this pawn first and go behind with our rook or we can go here. Then his king's going to come across. Is his king going to be fast enough? Probably so. Start pushing the G pawn. Okay, let's try it that way. Let's go. I don't think it's fast enough to stop it. Get that there. Could peel off a pawn if need be. So this is a bit tense now. This is where I really should take time now just to make sure I pick the right move. It might just be a small king move to try and reinforce the pawns up here. Somehow, you know, them attacking this. So he's moved. So I think it, I'm going to go for a reinforcing king. I'm going to have to. I'm going to follow that line. Because I don't think my rook can do it by itself. Pawn up. No, he can't do it by itself. Let's do the reinforcing king bit. Just be mindful not falling to any tricks with these little pawns, are we? So 
as we mentioned, if we can attempt to get it there, so if we're not falling for anything, are we pleased? Just go for this half diamond, so then is he going to attempt to do something funky? Drops down. I don't think there's anything else I need to do, is there? He drops. We don't need to take. Let's go. Yeah, we don't need to do anything. I mean, um, it's up to him. If he takes, then we take here. And the pawns are still flattened out. If we take, he takes. And then we get another pawn actually going upwards. We'd have a bit to contend with there, wouldn't he? Anyway, let's go with the king. That's all very interesting. I don't really want to get involved in that. Just take the pawn off, whichever he takes. Focus targeting. Well, hopefully we've given... The weirdest thing is, it's not going to be the right, right calculation for everybody. Everybody has a different way of targeting they you know everybody's got a different goal yeah so he's actually taken okay so let's just take here so it evens that out a bit i don't know if the rook's coming round now to come down here and stuff like that i don't think they'll have much time to do that but you never know yeah everybody's got a different goal yeah uh, everybody's lives are different so everybody playing chess has got a different focal point on what they believe is a good target Okay, so he's coming around, he's going to put a check on my king. And I need to stop this stuff though, don't I? Yeah, I need to stop this stuff. Let's get it out of the way. This is where it gets all a bit dancey dancey. I'm almost there. So he's coming around, he's got to get in the pawns. Let's go here. Our king wants to just come here, then get this promoted. And let's start playing some ball. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yep, let's just go here. I don't think he can squeeze in there now. So he's either going to lose his rook. And then we've got another pawn ready to promote. So there's a lot of combinations going on here. All from, hopefully, fingers crossed, and um, focus targeting. My version of focus targeting. Like I've just mentioned, everybody else has different focal points. They would have done this, they would have done that, they would have done the other X, Y, and Z. Oh, you missed this, or oh, you missed that. But at the end of the day, my journey is my journey and your journey is your journey. Everybody has a different focal point and must stress that. So when you're being told to look at tactics books or learn openings and all that sort of stuff, um, that really isn't you playing. You're not playing. You're not doing your own targeting. You're relying on somebody else's targeting system, um, which doesn't really make it your individual chess style or system. So the opponent's going for a big think. Um, my king, I'm sure, is is safe. Tempo-wise, if he's looking to come here, we do have the rook protecting here. So if he takes the pawn off, then we can go and get the queen. And then his king is so in the middle of the board, with just a little bit of time before we can squish it, maybe. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video because obviously they're going to take a while now. And it looks like they've left the game. There must be something seriously wrong with the resign button, honestly. I mean, anyway, we'll claim victory on that. So hopefully that demonstrated the um, idea of focus targeting, having the target, 
having the goal, having your desire, what do you want out of the position that you can see and then how then do you go about achieving that goal? If it's achievable, then go for it. If it's not so achievable and it's a long-term goal, come back to it after you've done your small bite-sized chunks of moves that then help enhance achievement of that final goal. I hope that makes sense.